I'd done some um, folklore anthropology work in Louisiana, working in restaurants, and I'd sort of been writing in sort of field diaries, and I'd never even occurred to me to record. And then I had a sort of a period of time where I was working in the food industry, and it, um, an amazing project came up with the British Library, National Life Story Collections, and Sheffield University a project about the history of food using oral history and I was, I was sort of given that place to do this oral history uh, PhD and so I became introduced to oral history and sort of the whole set of things fell into place at that point and I fell in love with oral history as a methodology. I don't know if it was my first thought but I remember having a very sort of strong feeling of like why had I not recorded when I'd been doing that field work in Louisiana like, why had it not occurred to me to ask people questions and use their words their sentences their voices so that kind of realization of that opportunity was was very sort of striking to me when I first started out and then you know the the privilege that we all feel of having license to speak to people and hear about different lives and different worlds was just completely thrilling and because I was interested in food and the food industry to be able to sort of roam around that world discovering uh, the sort of recent food history past was you know really quite extraordinary. In my life now I work as a curator at the British Library uh, in the archives and manuscripts department for contemporary politics and public life and wonderfully last year the Oral History Society decided to uh, donate the archive to the British Library so we have this really rich and fascinating archive which tells I think so interestingly not just well, it tells the story of the Oral History Society, you know, of its genesis, of how it's evolved through, you know, minutes, the conferences, the journal. There's the kind of rich detail of an organisation and how that grows and develops. But also within that archive is really the story of how oral history in the UK has changed, of what oral history has come to mean and the debates and discussions. So it is just, I, I sort of can't wait for historians to be unleashed on, onto that archive. I think it's really, really crucial that we don't privilege one form of historical record, historical source over another. You know, I think texts are incredibly important. I think material culture is incredibly important, but so too is oral testimony. And each of those are tools in the, the box of understanding the past, of understanding stories and bringing those together or thinking through those different forms of uh, sort of evidence are so important. But there is, of course, something special about oral history. And that is, of course, that it is so vital. It is so visceral. Uh, it, it puts the subjects of history centre stage and it insists upon their importance. And in that, that way, there is something unique and particularly wonderful about oral history, I think. The Oral History Society is one of those rare beasts which manages to be incredibly friendly, uh, hugely supportive and also really professional. It's been invaluable for me over my career in providing training, uh, advice, putting me in touch with people working in similar fields. Um, and it, I, I think what it does so well is it creates a community around oral history and people interested in oral history, uh, whether that's remotely or in person through conferences and meetings. So it's an amazing resource. I think that oral history has got a really important and very exciting future. I think that the digital realm opens up incredible possibilities for sharing stories, histories. Um, but I actually think on a more sort of fundamental, I suppose, political level, you know, the project of oral history, uh, which we've heard about tonight, which is, you know, at its heart, I think, or in large part radical, uh, but maybe you could say also optimistic, is, more, is sort of needed now more than ever. And I think the reason I love oral history is because I think oral history introduces us to each other. It forces us to 
take account of the worlds and the experiences of our friends, our neighbours, even our enemies, and to try and understand the world that we all share. And at this moment in history, that couldn't be more important.